In this tutorial, I'll show you how to link a slider to a property in a 3D scene. In this example, the Z location of a 3D object. At the time of making this tutorial, January 2018, version 1712 of Blend for Web has just been released. With this release, they have completely refactored the code base so that it is fully compliant with the ECMA Script 6 standard. This will have many benefits and implications. In this tutorial, I will just look at the new way of importing modules from the Blend for Web API. I want to use this style of code in a Blend for Web project for my slider, but if I use Project Manager to create a new project and I look at the JavaScript file, Project Manager is still using the starter file with the old syntax for registering the new module, for importing modules, for exporting the init function, and for calling the init function. It would not be difficult to edit the starter file to use the new syntax, but I'm going to use one of the code snippets, the instancing code snippet, that has been updated to use the new syntax. Click the Make Project button and I'm going to call the new project MyTemp3. Click Make. And when Snippet Cloning completed, click Back to Projects. For the new project, click the Edit link and the link for the JavaScript file. I'm going to start by stripping out the code used by the instancing snippet. I'm pressing the delete key and we don't need the objects module. Scrolling to the end, we don't need the draw line function. Highlight it and press delete and delete all the calls to the draw line function and save. The Blender file and the JSON file are copied over from the code snippet. It would be better to delete the files and put the name of the new file here in the code, but for speed I'm just going to overwrite the existing files. In Blender, change Blender Render to Blend for Web and click Set Recommended Options. Press X to delete the cube. Add Mesh Monkey. The monkey will not move unless in the Object Properties you click Force Dynamic. To overwrite the Project Blender file, File, Save As, Go to the Blend for Web folder, the Projects folder, the MyTemp3 folder, Blender, click on the Blender file and click Save As to overwrite it. To overwrite the JSON file, File, Export, Blend for Web JSON, make sure you're in the Projects MyTemp3 Assets folder, Click on the JSON file and click Export to overwrite it. Going back to Project Manager, I'm going to copy over the finished code, which I have open in a text editor. You can download the file from my website or you can type in the code yourself. The first thing I'm going to copy over is the Create Slider function Highlight, right click, copy, click, right click, paste, 
Next, I'm going to copy over the code that goes inside the load callback function, highlight the code, right click, copy, click, right click, paste, click save and back to projects. Click the link for the HTML web page. We get a slider and the slider value is linked to the Z location of the monkey. Next, I'm going to go through the code. My code starts with a call to the create slider function. To create a slider, you must create an input element and you must set its type attribute to range. A slider is not continuous. With these settings, its value varies between minus 50 and plus 50, with its initial value being set to zero. Once the slider is created, this code links the slider to the 3D object. First of all, we use the getElementById method to get a link to the slider object. I found that the name here needed to be different to the name used here. Then we use get object by name to get a link to the 3D object. Then we use the set translation method to set the Z value of the monkey to the value of the slider divided by a scaling factor. When a slider change event occurs, this function updates the Z location of the monkey with the new value of the slider. In this version of the JavaScript file, I've added the code for the preloader. At the time of making this tutorial, the code snippets don't have it. Include the preloader module so that in the init callback function, we can use the create preloader function, add the preloader callback function to the list of parameters of the load function, and include the preloader callback function in the code. I'm going to end the tutorial there. I'll put the files used in the tutorial for you to download at my website to visit my website, click the eye icon in the top right hand corner. If you'd like to subscribe, click the stick man. If you'd like to sponsor my tutorials, click the patron link. Thanks for watching and goodbye.